I've now cut the uh, sides and the cross rails for my gate to uh, the appropriate sizes for the width and the height and I've done that on this uh, chop off saw so then I know that they are absolutely square. So then what I've done is to mark the uh, mark where the overlap is going to be for our half uh, housing. Chisel method. I use a one inch chisel but I can't find one at the moment or 25mm. This is a bit thin but anyway it does the job. Into the right depth, push, in depth, push. relatively clean, just tidy it up with the uh, chisel or with the belt sander. And there we are, it's nearly as smooth as a baby's bottom there now, so we'll be ready for gluing with a good strong exterior adhesive wood glue and uh, screwed to hold it nice and tight and square. The more Cuts you make across here, and uh, the merrier, because uh, it will make for a, a smoother joint when you're trying to break these off with your uh, hammer. But uh, those are about what three, four mil apart. Those should break off reasonably easily with the chisel or the hammer. and then that's the other. that up to the bottom of the uh, just to the groove for you the bottom of the groove that's your maximum depth uh, working in with your one inch uh, sharp chisel from the sides from that side and then from that side and you won't split out this wood on the side here or the other side it all fits together reasonably well and it's square uh, just uh, use the magic square at the top there to uh, just check it's all okay and it seems to be fine so we'll glue it and uh, screw it pre-drill the uh, screw holes so it'll stop it splitting and uh, then we'll put a cross bar in like so just to cut that to fit and screw that into position um, I'm not quite sure which way this gate's going to hang at the moment because it'll depend on uh, where we can get a secure fixing on the existing posts that we've got. So uh, that is to be decided. So this is this is designed to be a sort of rectangular gate, so it can be hung either direction, and then we can hopefully make sure that the brace is going the right direction to stop the uh, gate sagging. Raw. 
put the gate frame loosely together and I'm just going to check all the corners with my big trusty square. See they're all square. Yep, they're all perfect or as near as can be. So what I'm going to do now is to uh, glue them with some uh, adhesive which will stick uh, to all sorts of materials uh, but it also sticks to wet materials so as this is uh, my workshop tends to be out in the uh, open air fairly well a certain amount of moisture in the wood so I'm going to use this particular this is a new one to me but apparently the principle's been around for about 15 years so so this is a sealant and adhesive I've gone for a clear one so uh, we're just going to put a blob of that underneath these uh, joints and then uh, put in probably three or four screws some people put about five but I think that might be a bit OTT for this little gate and uh, hopefully once the glue has gone off and the screws have tightened the glue it should all be uh, fine and then we'll put a central brace in afterwards it's a bit difficult to put the central brace in while they're all loose because uh, they all keep moving about so anyway we'll see I've got uh, 45 uh, number 4 uh, screws or an old money number 8 um, so I think probably for this this is just about uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit too long but uh, ideally 40 would probably be better but this hopefully if I don't uh, push it in too deep it should, uh, shouldn't protrude on the outside now I'm going to pre-drill the uh, screw holes and uh, glue them with the uh, OB1 So I've popped in there what we'll call the 40mm uh, uh, number 4 uh, screws and as you see I've left this one out because that would probably be in the way of my uh, T-hinge and just repeat this process on all four corners and then you'll be ready for your cross brace now make sure your joint is absolutely uh, square and that's where the useful magic square comes in and in this case I've drilled four holes, uh, pre-drilled four holes, two to three millimetre drill and I'm now going to put in the 40 mil by uh, number four screws. I think these are 45s but hopefully shouldn't protrude as long as I don't push the heads in too far. Don't forget to put the glue underneath in between the joint and uh, don't put too much as it spreads all over the place but I tend to use clear on this one so if you do have any leakage it doesn't look too bad I think this particular one is over paintable as well so if you did decide to paint the gate if you choose a, an adhesive gum sealant which is over paintable that's a bonus
and just repeat on all four corners making sure everything's square and tight and you've got the glue in between the joint lap joint the more time and trouble you uh, take to prepare your joints uh, the more accurate your joints will be um, on this timber there's a rounded edge so there would appear to be more of a gap here than you would think there should be uh, but it's partly because of the rounded edge, edge. but if you uh, as I say if you cut your take a bit more time and cut your joints and chisel them out or sand them out whatever so they're absolutely perfect then you'll get a really good joint and of course all that just comes with practice but the main thing is to make a start better to try so the next thing is to cut the uh, cross brace the diagonal brace it's a matter of deciding which way you're going to hinge your gate um, because the top of the diagonal brace wants to be at uh, the top of the gate where the latch is so the opposite side to the hinge this particular gate I've uh, designed it so as hopefully because uh, I'm not quite sure which way it's going to hinge yet because it depends on how good a fixing I can get onto the old-fashioned existing gate posts I've got so um, hopefully I'll be able to use this either way as I've put these uh, right at the very bottom and there's no uh, curved top or anything on this gate it's just a plain gate so on this one I've uh, got a piece of uh, the same size timber which is just slightly longer than what we need and then I've carefully positioned it so as it's right up against the corner there but not beyond the corner in this case and similarly I'm not making you feel too sick similarly there you're measuring the uh, cross brace the main thing is to uh, just have some packing timber or waste timber under the other two corners just to uh, keep it all level because otherwise you'll get an inaccurate uh, mark so the cross piece is now in snug as a buggy rug so I've put a couple of screws in either end of that and uh, once the boards are all attached that will give something else to attach the centre of the boards to and um, that'll all stiffen it all up the whole point of the brace is it stops the gate sagging probably not such an issue on a small gate like this but when you're doing bigger gates definitely very important right we now come to the exciting bit so I put the first board in just make sure it's uh, completely uh, square and level both ends and I've actually screwed it in today with some little 30 mil screws uh, it's just think it uh, will look better and it'll hold it uh, hopefully hold the boards nice and tightly so then this when you put the second board on you want your old faithful spacing wood so if you use a bit of your old 4x2 uh, and just use that to make sure it's absolutely accurate along the side of your first board as long as your first board is accurate of course and then uh, lay in position bring that board up to it make sure it's correct at the other ends and then just put uh, some screws in this uh, second board you'll only be able to screw it at the top and the bottom and then into the uh, diagonal brace so that's starting to uh, look quite smart so I'll continue that to the end then we'll probably turn the board over on the far edge which I'll show you in a second to give a flatter edge for the uh, Suffolk lat or whatever latch we're going to put on there.
I've now gone back to plan A. Uh, so what I've done is just continue the bores all the way along in the same fashion to get to the end and near the end. And then I'm going to put the far uh, then the final board. I'm just going to turn over and put the thinner edge facing this way. So then uh, by the angle of the board, it'll make a flatter area to put the uh, Suffolk latch or whatever latch we decide to put onto the gate. It'll be a bit easier to fit, hopefully. These feather edge boards are very uh, wet still, um, so these uh, screws go in perfectly easily without uh, splitting. Um, but if the boards were dry, it would pay to pre-drill them with a little uh, drill and then put your screws in and then hopefully you wouldn't get so much split out. But these seem to have gone in fine. And I used some slightly stronger, oh sorry, longer screws at the end there, 40 mil, uh, in that edge because the thickness of the feather edge is basically doubled up at one point. So then hopefully it should give it a firm fix. And I've also done a 40 mil along the uh, far edge because that'll be the edge which uh, will get the most uh, action from people um, opening and closing and going past it. Mm. So this is your basic pedestrian gate using feather edge boarding and uh, 4x2 uh, kiln dried timber. It's all tantalised so it doesn't really need treating. Uh, you can treat it with the uh, colour of your choice if you want but uh, as I say it doesn't need treating particularly. It'll last for many many years. So that's the uh, back view and that corner over there will be uh, the opening corner. So the brace is going from the bottom corner, which is where the hinges will be, up to the top corner where the uh, uh, soffit latch or whatever latch, ring latch, whatever you want to put on there is, and then that brace will stop the gate sagging. No, probably not such a big issue on a small gate like this, but definitely a bigger issue when you get into the more substantial gates. There's a lot of wood in that gate now, so that should be pretty substantial.